Hey, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on speed reading techniques. My name is Paul Novak. I'm the founder and CEO here at Iris Reading. Thanks for joining us today. I think you'll find the session very helpful, especially if you have a ton of reading that you need to do on a daily basis. Or maybe you have a stack of books that you've been wanting to get through and you just haven't had enough time to do that. So we are going to cover uh, techniques to help you read faster today. A few things you should know before we get started. Uh, first off, there are materials for today's session, and you can find them all at irisreading.com slash YTS. So if you go to that link on the screen here, that's where you can find it. I've got the materials pasted in the live chat as well. Feel free to submit submit questions in the chat or the comments below. We are recording the session, so you'll be able to see this video later on. Uh, but today we're gonna be covering speed reading techniques. And a few things to keep in mind, we are also live streaming this on YouTube and you can subscribe to the channel. If you search for us, Iris Reading, that's where you can find us. Uh, the link you see right there, youtube.com slash at Iris Reading and we'll be posting content on a weekly basis. So thanks again for joining us today. Now, what we're gonna cover is, first off, how fast do you currently read? Uh, some people know their typing speed, not everybody knows what their reading speed is. So we'll find out if you're an average reader in terms of speed, above average or below average. Now, by the way, I don't care where you're starting, all that matters is that we make progress, okay? And of course, your reading speed, it fluctuates. It depends on the kind of material. Also depends on how you're currently feeling. If you're sometimes at a high level of focus, other times we're at a lower level of focus. It could depend on the time of the day as well. Some people are more focused in the morning. Some people maybe later at night, or some people run into a little bit of drowsiness in the afternoon. So all these things play a part when it comes to your reading speed and also familiarity with the material, but we'll measure your reading speed. And that's why I want you to make sure you have some of the materials that we have for today's session. We're gonna use that to help us measure your speed. So there's just a couple PDFs through this uh, link you see here, irisreading.com slash YTS. You don't have to print them out. You could if you want. Uh, they're just, I think, uh, one or two pages. But you could also just have it on your screen, opened as a PDF document. I'll also have them displayed on my screen. So if you're viewing this session from a desktop and you want to maximize your screen, uh, you'll be able to easily read from my shared screen, assuming that your screen is large enough. If you're joining us from a smaller screen, then you might want to have them downloaded so you can read on your own. Also, I'm curious to know where you guys might be uh, joining us from. I'm broadcasting from the Miami area. I was actually born and raised in Chicago. That's my hometown, but I moved about a year and a half ago to the Miami area. And uh, what we're gonna be covering today, we'll cover how fast you currently read, also how to improve your focus. We all have to deal with distractions, right? You might be dealing with distractions as we speak, right? Sometimes you get a text message notification or other distractions. Sometimes it's just personal distractions. You ever read a whole page of text and you look up like, I have no clue what I just read. And uh, yeah, that sometimes our mind wanders off or we just zone out. So we'll talk about improving focus and also how to improve your comprehension. We are billing this as a speed reading workshop, but I don't want to overemphasize speed because we all know that, yeah, speed's important, but if you're not comprehending the material, then your speed doesn't really matter. So we'll work on improving comprehension. Also, how to read faster on the computer screen. I don't know about you, but I do most of my reading on the screen. It's probably like at least 80% or more of my reading is screen-based, whether it's my phone, laptop, a tablet. We'll talk about building up speed with practice. There are some drills that you can practice. We'll cover them in today's session. We'll actually do some exercises in the session to, that are focused on helping you improve your speed. And how do we go about reading complex information. It's one thing to be reading like a blog post or a news article. It's a whole different thing if you're reading something very technical like a textbook chapter or a journal article. So I understand some of you may be joining us and you might be uh, at the university level where you have to read very, very dense material or that could also be in the workplace. So we'll talk about reading more complex information as well. And really our focus needs to be in three areas if we're gonna be efficient. We wanna have a decent speed we want to read faster, but of course we need to comprehend the material. We want decent comprehension as well. 
And there's a third area of reading, which is retention. What do you remember? And what you remember is different than what you comprehend. So comprehension is what are you understanding the moment you're reading the material? And retention is what do you remember later on? I know these are related, but some people group them together as if they're one and the same, and they're not. Comprehension is like real time. What am I understanding at this very moment? But retention is in the future. Later on, what do I actually remember? It could be a day later, a week later, or even a whole year later. Sometimes your comprehension might be really good at the moment, and you might forget things tomorrow or a year from now. So we want all three of these areas, and that's what we focus at Iris Reading on. If you're not already familiar with us, we teach speed reading, memorization, note-taking, various study skills, and also I think all of this falls under the umbrella of productivity. We actually have a course on our website on personal productivity, and we do these workshops for high school students, college students. We do Half of our work is just doing corporate training. We've done this for employees at NASA, Google, LinkedIn, um, HSBC, various sovereign wealth fund. I, my background is formerly in the field of finance. I used to work in the trading world, uh, dealing with stocks, currencies, commodities, things like that. Uh, but I actually learned speed reading during my freshman year of college from a professor that I had. And the way that happened was I was struggling to keep up with all my reading. And I was meeting with my professors to try to get some help in their classes. And I had this one professor uh, who told me, he's like, well, maybe you're struggling to keep up because maybe you're just not reading fast enough. So he told me, that I should consider taking a speed reading course. And my professor told me he took one when he was in college and it helped him out a lot. So he suggested I do the same. And I remember searching for a speed reading course at the time. I was going to school in Chicago. Um, I graduated from DePaul University. Uh, my freshman year, I remember uh, looking for a speed reading course and I couldn't find any at the time. So I went back to my professor and just asked, hey, can you train me? and teach me how to read faster. And he said it would be okay if I came in during office hours and he would work work with me on it. So uh, he measured my reading speed. We're gonna measure your speed in a few moments here, but I started off at 190 words per minute. So 190 is about average. I was actually kind of relieved to know I was average because for so many years, I thought I was a slow reader. Uh, so I was kind of happy to know I was average. By the way, uh, my professor told me, don't be happy with average. He's like, you got to be above average if you're going to keep up with all this reading, especially if you go to grad school, right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Either you're in grad school or done with it. That, that's where you get bombarded with reading. But even at the undergrad level, the amount of reading you get in high school doesn't really compare to what you get at the university level. So I couldn't keep up. I was kind of happy to know I was average, but I needed to get, needed to get above that. Uh, he also gave me a standardized reading test. I scored a lousy 60% on this test. And... Uh, we started working on different drills and exercises, and uh, we went through about 10 hours of training, not in one day, but over a few weeks, come in for like 30 minutes, 10 hour, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We went through about 10 hours total. And again, my starting point was 190. My ending point was 830 words per minute, so more than four times faster. And as far as comprehension goes, second time around on the reading test, instead of a 60% I got a 80, 83% and because I had time to check answers, things like that. And I hate to sound cliche and call this a life-changing experience, but if you're reading four times faster as a student, that changes the game for you. For me, I started catching up, keeping up with my reading. Freshman year, I got a perfect GPA. I didn't maintain that because college gets harder after your freshman year. But this helped me juggle work and school. Actually, my sophomore year, I had to start working full-time uh, because at the time my parents were having some financial difficulties and I wanted to help them out. So I started working during the day, you know, like a nine to five job. It was actually eight o'clock to 4 p.m. I was working on the trading floor of the Board of Trade, found myself an internship working there. I'd work from eight to 4 p.m. and take classes at night from 6 p.m. to 9.15. And if I was still reading at that old reading rate of 190, it would be impossible to juggle. I was going to school full time and working full time. So this helped me out quite a bit. Uh, the way I started Iris Reading, it actually kind of happened by accident. I remember noticing a lot of my friends and classmates struggling to keep up with their reading, just like I was. Uh, it's my senior year, final semester, and I take an entrepreneurship class. And in that class, our professor wanted everyone to come up with their own business idea, write a business plan. And this is how Iris Reading got started. I basically 
create a basic business plan, started posting some flyers on campus and students would contact me that were interested and I would work with them one-on-one. -on -one. I already had a full-time job, so I was working with them on weekends. And one of the things I found was I just really, really loved teaching. And I kept doing this after I graduated, but it was kind of like a, like a side hustle. Um, I was still working full-time in the field of finance. I was a commodities broker at the time. I started working as an education manager in the futures and options trading world. And But I was doing this on the side, and little by little, this started growing to the point where you know, we started getting referrals. We started doing corporate training, doing this at other campuses. We started eventually hiring employees. We've done this now in over 100 cities around the world. Uh, we have instructors in various cities interspersed around the U.S. and abroad. Uh, for, and I want you to know you're in good company. When you're taking a class like this, everybody always says, I wish I learned this earlier. But you know what? Better late than never. So let's get to it. How do most people read? If you look at this green dot bouncing around, most people with their eyes, they do something like this, going word by word. Sometimes they're like, hold on, I got distracted. I got to go back and reread the information. We've all done that. And there's basically a few old reading habits that you got to change if you're going to start reading faster and more efficiently. And think about this. When was the last time you learned how to read? I mean, for most people, the last time they learned how to read was uh, the first time they learned how to read. And that's a little odd if you think about it. When was the last time you learned math? Not when you were like four or five, six years old. When was the last time you learned history? Again, not when you were a little kid. When was the last time you learned something in the sciences? Again, all of those areas, those subjects, you learn them year by year, right, through your academic career, and the knowledge builds up. You might even specialize in one of those fields. But with reading, which underlies most of the education that we go through, reading is unfortunately one of those things that people learn once in their life, when they're like four, five, six years old, and then it's kind of up to you. When you get to high school, uh, well, figure out how do you go about reading biology or chemistry or history. How do you read a novel? How should I go through newspapers? How do you read various types of materials efficiently? Also, I remember when I learned some, uh, we also teach memorization techniques. We're not going to cover it in this session, but if you go to our website, you can check out some of the courses that we have that go into deep detail on this. I wish I learned these skills earlier. And some of these memorization techniques, it frustrates me because I remember all throughout my academic career being told, memorize this, memorize that. Very, very rarely was I told, well, here's how you memorize this information. Usually they just told you to memorize it, but they didn't tell you how. So we covered that kind of stuff. And really, your reading skills, what we want to do here is upgrade them. I'm not here to say this is like a hooked on phonics program and that you're a poor reader. You might find out otherwise. We're going to measure your reading speed in a few moments, and you might find that you're already above average. If that's the case, great. We're going to work on making more improvements. Uh, also, we're going to work on improving comprehension. And even if you're below average, we can build up that speed, improve comprehension. But we got to change some old habits. One old reading habit we have to change is something called fixation. And fixation is something your eyes do. They fixate on one word, and then the next word, and the next word. And these fixations happen really quickly with your eyes. You only look at a word for a split of a second before you're off to the next word. The problem with this habit is you're perfectly capable of reading groups of words. Actually, uh, you already do it when you're when you're driving, when you're driving a car, and I don't know when you see a let's say you, you see an exit sign on the highway. Let's say you're driving towards uh, New York City and you see an exit sign that says New York City, three words. You wouldn't look at each individual word, right? You'd be fixated on the road. When you see the sign, you look at the sign and you fixate back on the road so you don't crash. But in that quick little glance of a sign that says New York City, you would see all three words, no problem, right? You can read groups of words. So people, People forget that this is possible. They, they don't do it on the page. So this is something we need to work on. We'll work on how to read groups of words. And also, there's another habit going back to reread. We've all done this, right? They call it regression. In the context of reading, I know regression has a different meaning mathematically. But when it comes to reading, regression just means rereading material. We have all done this, right? You ever read a whole few pages of text and you're like, all right, I have no clue what I'm reading. I got to go back reread all this information and it can be very very frustrating because sometimes it's hard to pay attention or especially if you feel like you have issues with attention 
So we'll work on improving our focus today as well. And there's a third old reading habit. This is one of the harder ones to change. Remember when you were first learning how to read? You have to you know, get up in front of class. You have to read out loud. Do you remember this dreadful experience? I say dreadful because I used to hate reading out loud because uh, English is not my first language. My first language is Polish. Both of my parents are immigrants from Poland. I was born and raised in Chicago, but I didn't start speaking English until I was like five or six years old. So I used to hate reading out loud because I was always messing up on words. The good news is you don't have to read out loud forever, right? Eventually, what does your teacher tell you to do? Instead of reading out loud, say the words in your head, right? Silently in your head, read to yourself. There's a name for this. They call it subvocalization. So subvocalization is that voice you hear in your head while you're reading. Have you, uh, have you noticed that you hear voices in your head while you're reading? Uh, and it doesn't mean you're crazy if you're hearing voice. It's your voice, right? By the way, if you're hearing, uh, if you're hearing other voices in your head, that's a separate issue. Okay. So basically there's some, this is one of the habits we got to change. It kind of limits our reading speed. And we're going to revisit this in a few moments, but speaking of your reading speed, let's, uh, let's measure it. So I want you to refer to the link for the materials. I posted it in the chat. It's also in the description of this video down below, or you can just see the link right here. Type it into your browser, irisreading.com slash YTS. That's where you can find this handout. The file name is speedtest1.pdf. And we're going to spend just a quick moment doing a little bit of reading to measure our speed. Now I'm gonna have it displayed on the next slide here. You see it right here? Now I'm gonna take it away because I don't want you to start reading yet. Let me give you some basic instructions. All we're gonna do is just read the way you normally would. Don't try to go faster than usual. Don't go slower than usual. Uh, just read for good comprehension at your normal reading rate. And we're only gonna read for one minute to begin with. So just read at whatever speed feels comfortable the way you normally would. And I'll stop you after a minute. Now, I've got a timer here. So at the end of the time, you'll hear my timer beeping like that. That's where you can stop. While you're reading, I am going to disable my webcam. So goodbye for now. And make sure if you're reading this from the screen here, from my shared slide, you might wanna have this uh, expanded, maximized. Otherwise, if this text is too small for you to read, I'd highly recommend you download that PDF so you can zoom in so the text is easy for you to read through it. Now, I'm going to start the timer in a few moments. Hopefully, you have that document in front of you, or maybe you're reading from my shared screen here. We're going to read for a minute, and then I'll stop you. Also, I'll turn off my microphone while you're reading, just so you don't hear any background noise on my end. But just read the way you normally would for one minute. All right, here's the article. Go ahead and begin reading. All right, that was a minute of reading. Take a look at the line where you stopped. Let's figure out what your reading speed was. And wherever you stopped, these numbers on the side will figure out, help you figure out your speed. So basically what they're saying, these numbers tell you how many words are to the end of that line from the very beginning. So if you stopped on this word even, that would imply that you read 249 words in that minute of reading, so 249 words per minute. If you finish the paragraph and read that extra word over here, well, then that would imply 250 words per minute. Maybe you stopped over here or here. Figure out your speed. You can figure it out precisely. Like if you stopped on the word is over here, we just add that one word to the previous number 
and that'll give you your speed. And uh, I'll tell you what the average is in a few moments, but you can let me know in the comments below or in the chat what your speed was. If you want to share it, I'll leave that up to you, but we do like to aggregate this data. So if you could do me a big favor and enter in the survey what your speed was, if you go to irisreading.com slash S1, you see the link on the screen or the QR code on the screen, it'll take you here to a quick little form. And we have thousands and thousands of entries here, and we'd like to aggregate that data over time. So enter your speed there. There's also an area for estimating your comprehension. This is just like a rough estimate or guesstimate of your comprehension. On a scale of zero to 100%, what would you say it was? Very subjective number here. And that's only because I don't have time to give you a full-blown standardized reading test based on a single minute of reading, okay? We don't have time for that, okay? Now, here's the average. 150 to 250 is the average reading speed. So some of you may be in there, some of you may be above average, you might be below average, that's fine too. Like I said earlier, I don't care if you're below average, above average, or in between, all that matters is that we make improvements. Progress is the key here. So that's the average reading speed, of, but I want you to know a few th details about this. First off, it's based on material that's kind of middle of the road in terms of difficulty, this number right here. If we had to categorize reading material into three buckets, easy, medium, and hard, uh, this material you see on the screen here would be considered medium level. That just means it's not advanced level physics, and it's also not Dr. Seuss, the cat in the hat. For middle of the road material, medium level, this is uh, the average reading speed. Also, this is just kind of a general average that doesn't take into account education level. For college-educated adults, as you would imagine, the reading speed is a little bit higher. The average speed for college-educated adults is 200 to 300 words per minute. Also, here's a little interesting factoid. Uh, 40 years ago, the average reading speed was a little bit higher. It was 250 to 350. So the average reading speed has gone down. That is a big problem because now we're dealing with more information than really ever before. I think some of that has to do with the continuously shrinking attention spans. And we all have uh, the challenge of trying to put our attention in places where it needs to go, right? There's constant distraction all around us. So these are the averages you can compare to this or this. Let's talk about how we go about improving. Now, oh, one thing I wanted to mention. When people read on the screen, they tend to read slower. And it can be more frustrating reading on the screen because sometimes you're reading on the screen and you got some ad popping up on the side or you ever read through a paragraph and there's like a link, linked words in between and you're like, you know what, maybe I'm interested in reading this article too. You open up a tab, then you go down that rabbit hole and then you've got like 20 tabs open and you're like, what did I get myself into? So average reading speed on the screen is closer to 136. That was based on a study done a few years ago where they found it was about 32% slower. Okay, we'll talk about reading on the screen in a few moments here. But going back to this habit of subvocalization, if you think about it, if you're saying all the words in your head, doesn't that mean that you're going to read about as fast as you talk, right? So, and there is a limit to how fast you can talk, right? I mean, some people talk faster than others, but you can only talk so fast. What, but what is the average? What We already figured out the average reading speed. What is the average talking speed? It turns out the average talking speed is this. Same number as last time, 150 to 250. Why is the average reading speed the same as the average talking speed? It's because of this habit right here. If you're saying all the words in your head, then you'll basically read as fast as you talk. Now, a few things I want you to know that this is not something, this habit, subvocalization, this is not something you could just turn off. This is something that we need to work on that little by little we reduce, but you'll never eliminate subvocalization. So for people that have looked into speed reading before, a lot of people get hung up on this concept. For example, I hear it all the time where people are like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to learn to read faster, but I, I can't get rid of that voice in my head. Here's the thing. You're not going to get rid of this voice. The goal is not to eliminate it. The goal is to reduce it. So what I mean by that is when I'm reading, 
I still say words in my head, but I don't say each and every single word in my head. So if I had a sentence like, uh, the boy jumped over the fence, in my head, I might just say, boy jump fence. Same idea comes across. I'm just not saying the boy jumped over the fence. Now it might come across as though, am I, am I skipping words? The answer is no, I'm not skipping words. I'm just not saying all the words. I'll give you an example of when you do the same thing. Uh, when you're driving and you see a stop sign, do you say stop in your head? Right, right. You see a stop sign and you just it just registers, right? You get it. But it doesn't mean you skip the word because you didn't say it. Okay, so we got to reduce subvocalization. We got to work on all these habits. Uh, so let's start by working on improving our concentration. The simplest thing you can do to immediately get better focus while you're reading is to use your hand, finger, or pen as a guide. What I mean by this is when you're reading on the page, printed material, just dragging your hand or your finger, or some people prefer to use a pen, and that's totally fine. Whatever you're most comfortable with, you're just creating some motion on the page. And the reason why you want to do this is because your eyes are naturally attracted to motion. Anything that moves around just naturally gets our attention. That's how we're wired as human beings. So we want to take advantage of this and create some motion on the page, and that will automatically get you to focus a little better. Now, there's some science behind why you want to do this. So it has to do with the way your eyes move. And there's two different eye movements that all human beings have. One is called a saccadic eye movement, and the other is called a smooth pursuit. So let me show you the difference between saccadic and smooth pursuit. The smooth pursuit eye movement, this happens when things are moving around. So when something is moving, our eyes move in this manner. I'll show you what that looks like in a few moments here. Now the saccadic eye movement, that happens when things are not moving around. For example, the room that I'm in right now, if I look around like this, my eyes would be moving in a saccadic fashion because I'm not really tracking something that's moving around. Everything in this room is pretty stationary except for me moving around. So the saccadic eye movement is where there's no movement and you're just looking around. Let me show you what that looks like. We'll do a close up of the eyeball. Apologies for the creepy video you're about to see here, but this is a saccadic eye movement. You'll notice the quick little stop and go motion, right? It's like, now that's how your eyes are moving when you're reading like this and not using your hand, finger, or pen as a guide. The smooth pursuit is very different. If you are using your hand, finger, or pen, or if you're just looking out the window and you're watching a car drive across the road, your eyes move in a smooth pursuit when your eyes are following something that moves. Here's what that looks like. That's a lot smoother. Remember the other eye movement? It was like very jittery, very stop, go, constant stop and go, herky-jerky movement. Now, let me show you them side by side. Saccadic eye movement on the left, smooth pursuit on the right. Let me show you what they look like side by side. You can definitely tell a difference, right? So that's part of the reason why you want to use your hand, finger, or pen as a guide when you're reading on the page is because you will initiate this smooth pursuit eye movement. And it turns out this eye movement lends itself to better focus. What I mean by that is your eyes will pay more attention to things that move around so much so that you actually, your eyes actually are wired to move differently when things are moving around. So let's leverage that when we're reading on the page. I say on the page because uh, when you're reading on the screen, that is a different matter. When reading on the screen, Nobody wants to be dragging their finger on the screen. I understand that. Same thing if you're reading, you know, on the phone, you're not going to be going like this because you're just, uh, it's a touch screen. So I guess you could use like a mouse or you could use like a pen, but let's talk about reading on the screen. So let me take some sample reading material. Uh, we're going to take some sample reading material from The Onion. Not sure if you're familiar with The Onion. If you're not familiar with The Onion, uh, their tagline is America's finest news source. So we're going to read this article right here. Infant suffering from recurring nightmare where his mouth full of teeth. Okay, so we're going to read this article. It's a very short article. But I want to show you how you could read it faster using a program that we developed 
that helps you read faster on the screen. It's called Accelerator. If you go to accelerator.com, that's where you can find it. And basically all you gotta do is copy and paste the text into this box. I already did that, so I'm gonna click begin. Focus your attention in the middle of the screen here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the read button. And when I click read, you're gonna notice the words right here blinking on the screen at whatever speed we set in the program. Now I currently have it set to 200 words per minute. So see if you can keep up with that. We're just gonna be reading this uh, article right here. Infant suffering from recurring nightmare where his mouth full of teeth. All right, let's try it out on Accelerator. Like I said, just focus your attention in the middle of the screen here. I'm gonna turn my webcam off for this exercise. And like I said, focus right here. We're gonna be reading at 200 words a minute and then we'll take, we'll start bumping up our speed on some other material, okay? Let's try it out at 200 words a minute, a minute first. Here we go. Okay, so that was 200 words per minute. Now, for a lot of you, I think you might be looking at that and you're like, okay, that's weak sauce. That's kind of slow. I can definitely go faster. Let's go a little bit faster. So let's take another article, again, from The Onion. And we've got this article, Johnson & Johnson raises price of Band-Aids to $100,000 a piece. Okay, so I copy and paste my text. Again, as you can see, very short article here. I'm going to copy and paste it into Accelerator. I'm going to click Begin, and we're going to do the same thing. Now, you may have noticed in the previous example that I had three words blinking at a time. That I, I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that you can read groups of words, and you can change that in the settings to whatever you want. But I recommend trying out two or three words to start. In the settings here, there's a chunk size setting where you can change that. Now, there's also a words per minute setting. We were going 200 words a minute. Now we're going to go 250. Let's try it out, and let's see if you could still keep up going a little bit faster. Now, by the way, I should mention one other thing. Because we are streaming this as a live stream, depending on your internet connection and my internet connection and the encoding done through the live stream, uh, when you're using this program on your own, the blinking will happen at a very consistent pace. But since we're doing a live stream, if there's any hiccups in the internet speed along the way, then you might notice it's blinking at a constant pace, and then it might like freeze for a split of a second and then blink very fast and then slowly. And But it should be going at a consistent pace if you're using it on your own. But let's try going a little bit faster, 250 words per minute, through this article right here. Johnson & Johnson raises price of Band-Aids to $100,000 a piece. Here we go. All right, so that was 250 words per minute. Let's try going faster. Let's take uh, another article here. Uh, Taco Bell introduces new cheesy beef dunk tank. All right, let's read that one. We're gonna go, instead of 250 words a minute, we're gonna go 
300 words per minute. And by the way, yeah, you can change that in the settings, but there's also some keyboard shortcuts down here. So you can use the up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease your speed by 25. Also, uh, pretty helpful, the space bar. That's kind of like your play and pause button. So if it goes too fast, you can just hit the space bar. And if you got to go back, you just use the back arrow key to go back. Or you could use the right arrow key to skip ahead. And you can see the other keyboard shortcuts here. Now, I want you to try your best. We're going to bump it up from 250 to 300. So I'm going to hit the up arrow key a couple times, up to 300 words per minute. You see right there. We're going to go through this article right here. Taco Bell introduces new cheesy beef dunk tank. And let's see if we can keep up at 300 words per minute. Here we go. Okay, so I think you get the idea. This program will blink words on the screen at whatever speed that you set, and you could change that to whatever it is you want here. And uh, this basically makes it easier to go at a faster pace because you can really train yourself to go faster. Now, you can do one word, two words, three words. I wouldn't recommend doing one word just because you're perfectly capable of going faster than that. But try it out for yourself. You can use it as a training tool. This is a free speed reading application that we created. We are working on turning this into an iPhone and Android app. You can always go to accelerator.com to see whatever updates and new features that we're adding. We're also working on turning this into a plugin for the browser. But check that out when you have a chance. We're going to move on now back to the slides here because I've got a number of other things I want to cover in today's session. Now, if I asked you, how do you get better at anything? I think all of us would agree. The answer is practice. Now, when we're talking about practice as it relates to reading, there's an approach we can take to practicing and improving our reading speed, comprehension, and retention. We're going to start with some practice exercises that we call speed drills. Now, the whole point of a speed drill is to purposely go faster than you would normally read. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take material you already read. Remember this article? We read it for a minute. Maybe you read up to here or here, wherever you got up to. We're going to spend a quick moment doing a speed drill. And like I said, the goal is to purposely go faster than normal. The way we're going to do that is I want you to reread what you already read in 40 seconds. Now, originally you read for 60 seconds, right? When we measured your speed. I'm giving you 40 seconds because it shouldn't take you that much time to reread what you've already read. So basically, just go through the same material. Your goal here is to get used to seeing words at a faster rate than usual. And that's why we're taking material we already read. So we're just going to do a quick 40-second exercise. Now, if it's convenient for you to use your hand, your finger, or a pen to guide your eyes, I would highly recommend doing so. However, I do understand some of you might be reading off the screen. And especially if you have a touch screen, it's not going to work for you. That's okay, but if you can use a pacer to guide your eyes, great. Regardless of whether or not you use a pacer, the main goal is you have to move your eyes faster through the text. So I'm gonna give you 40 seconds on the clock here. I'm going to disable my webcam, goodbye. And I want you to get from the beginning of this passage to the line that you originally read up to. Now, if you get there early, you can just continue going into a, back to normal reading mode and just continue reading from where you left off. But at the very least, you got to get through the text you were originally read in 40 seconds. Let's try out our first drill. Ready, set, and go.
All right, that was 40 seconds. We got to your line, very good. We're gonna do another drill and we're gonna go a little bit faster. Instead of 40 seconds, I'm now gonna give you 35 seconds. So a little bit less time. I want you to go a little bit faster. We're gonna do the same thing from the top to the line you were originally read up to, wherever that may be. And you got 35 seconds to do that now. So basically I'm just asking you to skim what you've previously read. Let's try it out. We're gonna do a 35 second drill here from the top, ready? set and go a little faster All right, that was 35 seconds. If you got to your line, very good. We're going to cut it down again. Instead of 35 seconds, we're going to do 30 seconds. Now, this means you got to go twice as fast. Double your normal reading speed. Now, it's through material we already read, so it's just skimming what you've previously read. Don't worry if your comprehension is so-so or not that great. Honestly, your comprehension should be about the same as or actually maybe a little better since we're going over the same text we previously read. But the goal here is not so much an emphasis on comprehension. The goal right now, or the priority right now, is speed. I want you to get used to seeing words faster than you would normally read them, okay? So you gotta go at a speed that's about double your normal speed. Let me put 30 seconds on the clock. From the top, again, make sure you get to the line that you originally read up to. Ready? set and go. All right, that was 30 seconds. Now, we're going to make the drill even more challenging. I want you to get all the way to the end of the passage, all the way to the very bottom, from the top to the bottom. I'm gonna give you more time. I'm gonna give you a very generous minute and 30 seconds. So one minute and 30 seconds. It's obviously not too generous, uh, but keep in mind, we're still doing a speed drill. So that means your goal is to purposely go faster than you would normally read. So this time we gotta get through the whole passage, but I'm just, you can equate this to basically skimming. I want you to skim all of this text. Even the material down here that you probably haven't read yet, I want you to skim all of that too. Go through it faster than usual. You will notice that your comprehension is going to drop like a rock. That's okay when we're doing these drills, okay? In a little bit, we'll focus on comprehension, but right now, I want you to fly through this material, go faster than usual. You got a minute and a half to get to the very, very end. And just to kind of pace you through it, I am going to give you a heads up when we get halfway through the time. When we get halfway through the time, I'll just say halfway. So you know you should be about halfway there, maybe somewhere around here. And if you're not halfway, move your eyes faster through the text. Remember, we're basically skimming during this exercise. All right, a minute and a half, get through all the text, ready from the top, ready, set, and go.
halfway. All right, that was a minute and a half. If you got through all that text, very good. We're going to do one final drill. I know we're doing this repetitively, but as all of you are probably aware, uh, repetition is the mother of all skill. So that's why we're doing these drills repetitively. Uh, we're not going to do it too repetitively because we don't want to get exhausted, but we're going to do a minute and 15 seconds now. Same thing from the top to the end. Just skim through all of it. Okay, so let me put a minute 15 on the clock. By the way, after we're done with these drills, we're going to start focusing on comprehension. Right now, we are prioritizing speed over comprehension. Let's just do it once more. Skim through all this text. Go faster than you would normally read. Ready, set, and go. All right, that was a minute and 15 seconds. If you got through all the text, very good. Now, we're going to go back to normal reading. When I say normal reading, I mean reading for comprehension. So let's refer to the next handout. So if you went to that link from before, and I'll post it in the chat here, irisreading.com slash YTS, that's where you could find it. The file is speedtest2. PDF. I'll have it displayed on the next slide, but what we're going to do when I say back to normal reading, I want you to comprehend the material. So that means slow it down. Not too slow, but also not too fast. Go at whatever speed is comfortable enough to understand the material. And if you've been using your hand, finger, or pen as a guide, keep doing that. We're going to read for a minute and then we'll stop. So here is the article. Everyone should be ready to read, hopefully. Ready, set, and go. All right, let me stop you there. That was a minute of reading. And look at the line where you stopped. Let's figure out your reading speed. 
So go ahead and figure that out. Make sure you take note of it. And of course, compare it to what you had before. I'm curious to know if you made an improvement. And you can let me know in the chat or the comments below, uh, what was your starting speed? What was your ending speed? It's not uncommon that when we do this first set of drills, some people will make an improvement. And if that's the case, then great. That's why we have this success baby here. We're both wearing green shirts, apparently. Now, here's the thing. These drills, the way that they work, the way that they're meant to help you improve your speed, we're going to talk about that. But first, if you can share with us that data, we would highly appreciate it. If you go to irisreading.com s1, or if you scan that QR code, uh, we aggregate this data. We've got thousands and thousands of entries, but we like to aggregate it over time just so we can keep track of people's speeds, what their improvements are. So you can enter your speed there. Uh, great. I see Aaron made a nice jump in, in improvement here. By the way, we haven't even started talking about comprehension. We're going to get into that in a few moments here. But if you made an improvement, awesome. Really happy to hear that. That's my goal. And by the way, we only did a little bit of drills. I'll stick around and I'm going to show you how you can do these drills on your own. Now, how these speed drills work, it's kind of like driving a car on the highway. You know, when you're on the highway, you're going faster than usual. Let's say you're going 70, 80 miles an hour for a long period of time. Eventually, you get off the highway. How does it feel when you get off the highway? Does it feel kind of slow? Like sometimes, sometimes you were driving 70, 80, you get off the highway and you don't realize it, but you're going like 40 or 50 miles an hour in a school zone and you don't realize it. Why? Because you got used to going way faster on the highway. Think of these speed drills as very similar. What if you get used to seeing words at five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred words per minute? Well, when you drop it down to something that's a little faster than usual, it's not going to feel as fast anymore because you've been training at a much higher rate. So that's the idea behind doing these kind of drills. Now let's talk about improving comprehension. There's a simple way we can squeeze out some better comprehension while we're reading, and that is to change up your speed. Sometimes slowing down, sometimes speeding up. So kind of like uh, you see this uh, turn right here, to borrow the analogy again from driving, you shouldn't always drive the same speed, right? If you're making a turn like this, you will slow down. When the road is straight, you're on the highway, no traffic, you speed it up. When you're reading, we want to also do something similar. But when should we slow down? Let's take an example uh, passage here. This is not one of the handouts, but we have this article, India's Skills Famine. India's Skills Famine. Let's say we're reading through this. Here's a good rule of thumb. And this doesn't just apply to short articles like this, but even to more technical material. It's a good idea to slow down on the first sentence of each paragraph and then speed up after that. Slow down here, speed up here. Slow down here, speed up here. Why would we slow down on the first sentence of a paragraph? I think you already know the answer. The first sentence is almost always the main idea, or if you want to call it a topic sentence or introduction, either way, it's all the same. We get our main point, and then we get our details. New paragraph, same thing. New idea, supporting details. So let me zoom in on this paragraph so I can show you what I mean here. We would slow down on this first sentence, and that first sentence reads, the economic transformation of India is one of the great business stories of our time. Hmm. Sound like a main idea? Very straightforward. We take that, and we're going to run with that through the rest of the paragraph. We go a little faster. When you get to the new paragraph, we slow it down. It says here, but India has run into a surprising hitch on its way to superpower status. Its inexhaustible supply of workers is becoming exhausted. Another main idea? Let's take that and run with it. Go a little faster. Next paragraph, how is this possible in a country that every year produces two and a half million college graduates and 400,000 engineers? Interesting. Now we speed up. So we slow down, we speed up. Next one, there was a time when many economists believed that post-secondary education didn't have much impact on economic growth. Interesting. Now I'm going to speed up. So you see how we can slow down and speed up, and this is a good way to get into a nice reading rhythm. The next paragraph, this one reads, the irony of the current situation is that India was once considered to be overeducated. That's a strange statement, right? Like, how could a country be overeducated? That is a good thing, no? And now we're going to get our details about that. Next paragraph, same thing. Since the Second World War, the countries that have made successful leaps from developing to developed status have all poured money, public and private, into education. 
And here's the last paragraph. India has taken tentative steps to remedy its skills famine. The current government has made noises about doubling spending on education, and a host of new colleges and universities have sprung up since the mid-1990s. I wanted to read all those first sentences out loud to you just to demonstrate the point, something we all know. The way we were trained to write is to give your main idea supporting details. We can take advantage of that when we're reading. Slow down, speed up, and that gets you into a nice reading rhythm, like I said. But the fact is that changing your speed forces you to pay attention. I'll give you another example of this where uh, when it comes to the way people talk. Have you ever had a teacher or a professor in the past that uh, spoke in a monotone voice like this? Imagine if you came to the session and I'm like, hello everyone, my name is Paul Novak and today we're going to be talking about speed reading and what we're going to do. If I to talked at a in a monotone voice, it would be hard. it's hard to pay attention, right? When that's the case. Think about the speed of a monotone voice. It's very, very consistent, right? There's no fluctuations. Same thing with the volume. A monotone voice, the volume doesn't really fluctuate, stays the same. And because you don't have those changes or fluctuations, you'll it'll be harder to pay attention. So when we're reading, the same thing happens. When you're reading, you don't want to go at exactly the same speed on every line or you're going to lose your focus. So it's better to slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up. Constantly changing your speed will trick you into paying attention. Now, there's one other reason I wanted to read all those first sentences out loud to you, and that is because if you had to read this article right now, what would happen to your reading speed? You'd probably read it a little faster than usual, right? Because I kind of give you a heads up on what it's going to be about. By reading the first sentence of each paragraph, you know it's about India, a shortage of skilled labor, education, the economy. You got your main points, right? And this leads us to a very, very important speed reading strategy that you should always do when you're reading informational material. You should always inspect what you read. When I say inspect, I mean get familiar with something before you read it. Now, how you do this depends on how the material is structured, but on a simple one-page article like this, you don't just read it beginning to end. A better idea is to read the first sentence of each paragraph first, get all your main ideas, and then read the entire article. Now, I wouldn't read the first sentence of each paragraph if I was reading a chapter in a book or a textbook, something that's very long. What if I have a 50 page chapter? This is gonna be too tedious. What I'll do instead, when you're reading a something more complex, maybe it's a textbook, it could be a journal article, it could be just you know this book right here where you're going, I don't know, they, there's like 20 page chapters in that book. So we inspect the chapter by reading the intro, the headings, subheadings, basically anything that pops off the page, but words that are in bold, things that are in italics, bullet points. Maybe you have some charts, tables, diagrams. Don't dive into the details. Just read the titles of those charts, tables, diagrams. If you're reading history, you might have like pictures. Take a look at the pictures. A picture is worth a thousand words. Read your conclusion. Uh, also, when you get to the end, if you have questions at the end of your chapter, I remember when I was in high school, the teacher would always be like, okay, uh, read chapter five for homework and do the questions for homework. I'm going to read the questions now before I read the chapter. So inspecting is all the stuff that you do before you actually read and get the nitty gritty details. We start with the general big idea, and then when we read, that's where we're going to go for the details. So here's an example of this. If you're dealing with, uh, this is a finance textbook. You see the chapter, chapter one, goals and governance of the firm. You see this big red box that I drew over the first few paragraphs? This is basically your introduction. It doesn't say introduction, but you can tell because on the next page, that's where we get into our first section. So I would read all of this. And then you see those red arrows? That's where my eyes would be going. And I'd be reading headings, boldface words, subheadings, next page. There's no headings or subheadings here, but there is a table. I'm going to read the title of that table. Next page. You see, this is all the stuff that I'd be looking at. When I get to the end, I'll read the conclusion. Then I go back to the beginning. We already read this. So I'll start here. And now I'm going to read it faster with better comprehension because I know generally what it's going to be about. Even if it's detailed information, I'm giving myself a little bit of an edge here by getting familiar with it. So inspecting. 
this leads us to uh, the reason why our organization is called IRIS. It's an acronym for how you would approach reading material in an efficient way and in a comprehensive way. So you inspect first, you read next. When you're done reading, you inquire. By inquire, I mean ask questions. When you're done reading something, it's a good idea to kind of reflect on it and think to yourself, okay, what did I just read? What are the biggest takeaways? Uh, what do I need to memorize? And that leads us to the storage step. If you've got to store some information, well, you got to figure out how to store it. By the way, if you're interested in this topic of memory, how do I memorize information? That's what you do at the end of this process. Uh, if you go to our website, irisreading.com, that's where you can find online courses that we have that dive deeper into the topic of memorization. So I'll post that link in the chat. If you go to irisreading.com, click on the online courses page, that's where you can find that. But also you can do a speed drill at the end of this process. So here's how that works. When you're doing speed drills, you wanna practice at about double your normal speed. Now we have courses that go into like guided training on that. Again, you could go to the website for it, but basically if you're reading at 200 words per minute, you wanna practice at 400 words a minute or around that rate. So eventually 250, won't feel that fast. If you're already reading at 250, you practice at 500. So you can get to something like 300. When I say get to something like 300, I mean reading at 300 with a confident level of comprehension. If you're reading at 300, you practice at 600 and so on and so forth. This is how we can build up our speed over time. And you could do this during this process. You just gotta time yourself while you're reading. So if you're reading a chapter, maybe you read that chapter in 20 minutes your speed drill would be 10 minutes if you read for 20 minutes. All that means is I'm done with this chapter. I'm gonna go back to the very, very beginning. And now I'm basically gonna skim what I just read in half the time. Now, what if your chapter was shorter? Maybe you read for 12 minutes. Okay, then your drill would be six. Or if you read a short article that was only four minutes to read, okay, two minute drill. So these drills you could even do with that accelerator program. Again, when it comes to storing, if you're interested in that topic, you can check out the courses that we have on our website. Also, if you're interested in the topic of focus and the passages we read during the session were extracted from this book, Focus, A Simplicity Manifesto in the Age of Distraction by Leo Babauta. Uh, the author has given us permission to freely distribute the PDF of this book. It's a quick read, it's about 100 pages, but if you want me to email that to you, uh, the PDF of that book, uh, just shoot me an email. My email is just paul at irisreading.com and I will reply with the PDF attached. And if you're interested in advanced courses, or if you wanna invite us to your company or your school or your organization, uh, feel free to reach out. Again, my email is paul at irisreading. If you go to our website and you check out some of these courses, we dive deeper into speed reading. We've got advanced courses for that, comprehension strategies, how to improve your memory, note-taking. If you wanna find some of the ideal ways to take notes, there's a course on that. And also just a course on personal productivity. So if you go to the website and you wanna sign up for any of those courses, here is a code that you can use. It's just Paul, and that's my name. It will give you 30% off any of the courses that you have there. And also be aware that we have, we're gonna be posting weekly videos on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to me. Uh, my email is just paul at irisreading.com, or if you wanna connect on LinkedIn, you see the link right over there. Let me know that you were in the session. I'm happy to connect with you. Or if you wanna connect on Instagram, you've got all the information right over there. I wanna thank you all so much for attending today's session. I hope you found it helpful. If you like what we're doing here at Iris Reading, please tell your friends about us. And if you don't like what we're doing, tell your enemies about us. But thank you so much for attending and have a great rest of the day. Take care.